In 1899, Edgar Ross confronted Arthur Morgan with a proposition, hand over Dutch and return for his own freedom. You're a wanted man, Mr. Morgan. $5,000 for your head alone. Arthur declines the offer, but what's more interesting is that Ross told a young Jack Marston, Enjoy your fishing, kid, while you still can. <laughs> a statement that would later drip with irony. To understand the significance of this event, we need to go back to the birth of Edgar Ross. Excuse me, you Edgar Ross? Born in 1861, Ross's childhood was shaped by a society reeling from conflict. His formative years played a crucial role in defining his character. He didn't pick just any job, he joined the Pinkerton Detective Agency. And while working under the mentorship of Andrew Milton, he quickly ascended up the ranks. But his story isn't as straightforward as you think. During the Colta chapter, Dutch and the gang target and rob a train. But not just any train. It belongs to businessman Leviticus Cornwall. Look at this place! <laughs> it's like a palace! Well, now I've seen everything. Cornwall catches wind of this and opens his deep pockets and begins to fund the Pinkertons with one mission, and that is to hunt down and dismantle the Vandalin gang. Ross and Milton later approach Dutch and his gang at their camp in Clemens Point. Hey Dutch! We got a problem. Not a problem. Visitors. A solution. With Milton convincing the gang to turn on Dutch, in exchange for being allowed to flee for a short time. You're making a big mistake, all of you. The pair don't achieve the desired outcome, but instead of backing down, they decide to heat it up. Come on, get your damn hands off of me, boy. Later in the bustling streets of Saint Denis, during a bank heist, Ross is seen by Milton's side when he captures and executes Hosea Matthews. No! Oh, God damn it! Leading to a fatal shootout. But the tension doesn't end there. We later catch Ross and Milton leaving a meeting with Cornwall. The businessman is frustrated and berates the pair for their lack of progress. Find me Dutch Vanderland! Bring him here! And leave the laws to them as need them! Good day, sir! Along, Mr. Ross, we have work to do. Further in the story, while Dutch and his gang are robbing a train, Milton captures Abigail and holds her hostage. They came and took Abigail! Who did? Agent Milton and his men took her to Van Horn to be put on a boat and tried for murder! Arthur, being one to never back down, attempts to rescue her and after a brawl unfolds, Abigail sets herself free and shoots Milton in the head, killing him instantly and saving Arthur's life in the process. But the drama doesn't die down with Milton. Ross, seizing the mantle, leads a formidable Pinkerton squad to Beaver Hollow, and while he might be out of sight, his presence is undeniable. His voice cuts through the tense air. At some point after 1899, Ross left the Pinkertons and joined the National Bureau of Criminal Identification. Ross continued to excel in his duty, attaining further praise and respect by his colleagues that by 1907, Ross was appointed as a director of investigation. And this was when things start to get serious. Ross and his new associate, Archer Fordham, make a chilling discovery in the hideout at Mount Hagen. They find a corpse, but not just any corpse. It's the lifeless body of government informant Micah Bell. This tragedy sends Ross and Fordham into a manhunt, seeking to find the person responsible. Town after town, after visiting every nook and cranny, the two agents are seen interviewing a number of people, and they manage to trace the culprit to a little peaceful ranch in Beecher's Hope, where they witness a man named John Marston teaching a young Jack how to groom a horse. In 1911, prior to the events of Red Dead Redemption, Ross takes John's family away from him in order to strong arm him into hunting down some of his former comrades from Dutch's gang. That's a nice way to greet somebody. 
Why don't I get the warm and tender embrace? While Williamson and Escuela have been addressed, Ross demands more. He instructs John to help him locate Dutch. Get in the damn automobile. Can we assume one of my commitments is cleared? Unfortunately, nothing is cleared, John, until your obligations are met. We need you to find Williamson, then head to Blackwater as quick as you can. We have reason to believe that Dutch Vanderland is in the area. After saving one of their informants and putting a stop to Dutch's bank robbery attempt, Oh, it's nice to see you, John. Hello, Dutch. Ross plans an attack on Dutch's base with the U.S. Army. After the debacle with the army and the bank, we have to put Mr. Vanderlyn to rest ourselves. Their vehicle becomes unusable during the assault, forcing them to proceed on horseback with the U.S. cavalry. They eventually reach the base, and with the soldiers' help, aid Marston in eliminating the gang members. You tend to your wounded! I gotta face Dutch alone! John finally confronts Dutch, who chooses death over capture by jumping off a cliff. Our time has passed. Yeah. Arriving at Dutch's body, Ross criticizes Marston for not killing Dutch himself. He shoots Dutch's corpse with Marston's gun. Oh, trust me. It looks better in the report that way. Where's my family? Uh, your wife was killed in a prison riot last week. So, <laughs> I'm only joking, dear boy. They were sent back to that Scrabble ranch of yours in Beecher's Hope. They're quite safe and sound. He and Fordham release Abigail and Jack, directing Marston to his ranch, but it turns out to be short-lived. While John reconnects with his family, Ross breaks the agreement and leads a fierce attack on the ranch without warning. We're leaving the farm. I'll watch from the silo. You two go to the barn. Get the horses ready. John! I'll meet you there! Amidst the chaos, John battles back, defending his family and home from relentless waves of attackers. They eventually retreat to the barn and John sends Abigail and Jack away on horseback. Now listen, Jack. Norlin, get on this horse. Get out of here. Go find a place to hide. You're coming with us, Paul. I'll catch up. You keep riding and don't look back. And don't be worried about me, you hear? Now get going. You stay out of trouble, John. Ain't no trouble, Abigail. Ain't no trouble. I love you. I love you. Now go! Get! <laughs> The barn is surrounded by Ross and his men and in the ultimate act of courage, opens the big heavy barn doors and steps out. John sacrifices himself for his family's safety. Ross watches his downfall, lighting a cigar in triumph, leaving John's body to be discovered by Jack and Abigail. Did you hear that? Jack, we have to go back for Pa. Let's go! <laughs> In 1914, 19-year-old Jack Marston, seeking revenge for his father, locates Ross. After mourning his family, Jack encounters Agent Howard Sawicki in Blackwater. Did you work with a man named Edgar Ross? who tells him about Ross's retirement to a cabin on Lake Don Julio. I think he went and retired about a year ago. Last I heard, him and his wife moved out to a cabin on Lake Don Julio. Jack travels there and meets Emily, who, believing Jack has a letter for Ross, directs him to Ross's hunting location in Mexico. I was looking to deliver a letter to Edgar Ross. Oh, that husband of mine. Jack finds Ross's brother, Philip hunting along the Rio del Toro, who reveals Ross's further downstream. I've got a letter here for Edgar Ross. You know him? I, I heard he was down in these parts with his wife. Yes, I know him. He's my brother. Jack confronts Ross, who is unapologetic and justifies John's death, and warns that he'll do the same to Jack. You sent him to do your dirty work. Then you shot him like a dog. 
and I'll shoot you like one too, you little piece of trash. However, Jack doesn't back down, resulting in a duel. I ain't going nowhere, old man. Enjoy your fishing, kid, while you still can. <laughs> Jack emerges victorious, avenging his father as Ross falls by the river.